Hi again, this is Jeff, your ProtoPy expert, answering your ProtoPy questions. Today's question comes from George. He asks, I noticed that when applying a double tap and single tap trigger to the same item, the single tap always fires just before the double tap does. Is it possible to prevent this? Yeah, yeah it is, and I'm going to show you two ways to do it. One is very simple, but limited in its utility. The second way is a bit more involved, but uh, much more flexible. In my Pi here, I have this item in my, my layer thing, this tap target, and I have both a tap and a double tap trigger assigned to it. When I tap, I want to light this first light bulb icon up, and if I double tap, I want to light the second one up. So let's preview this. Single tap, the left light bulb lights up, great. Now if I double tap, both of them are lighting up. And this is the problem that George is describing. What's happening is when you do a double tap, the first tap is interpreted as a single tap and that single tap fires. What I want to do is I want to introduce a little bit of a delay to wait after that first tap to see if there's a second one. If there's no second tap, these guys will fire as normal. If there's a double tap, then I want to cancel this and instead execute these guys. So let's add a bit of a delay and you can do that in your timeline here. So the first animation that I'm doing here is I'm making the light bulb one uh, light bulb one icon here. I'm increasing its opacity to 100. I'm going to delay that by 0.2 seconds. So you can either just dial in a start delay just by typing it out or you can just drag it around on the timeline as well here. So I want to make a 0.2 second delay and this is the amount of time I'm going to wait for that second tap. And you can adjust this. So if you want to wait for a bit of a slower double tap, you can increase this delay. Um, I think 0.2 is about the right amount of time. And in my double tap, if that second tap is detected, I want to cancel this animation here. And this animation is on light bulb one. So what I can do is I can call stop on light bulb one on's animation. So now let's preview this. Single tap left light bulb lights up, double tap, right light bulb lights up. Now I mentioned the delay in here. There is a very slight delay. If I tap just a slight, it's 200 milliseconds. If I were to increase the delay, so right now we've got this lighting up after 0.2 seconds. If I was to increase this delay to 0.5, you're going to see more pronounced delay, right? Click half a second right there, but it does allow for a bit of a slower double click. So you just need to play with this value and find one that's right for you. 0.2 seemed to be about right for me. So this is great when you have something simple. You only need to stop one thing. In my second scene, I have the same thing set up, but you can see there's a lot more going on here. I have a lot of animation. And let's preview this. So if I single tap, then I get this ripple effect coming out from the center of the target. I have sparks flying along the line, and then finally the light bulb lights up. And if I double tap, right, we have the same problem. The single tap is being... Um, is being detected and so is the double tap. So instead of calling a stop on every single one of these, as you can imagine this would be incredibly messy, that can work but you've just got so much going on here that you're gonna make this twice as long and it just makes it messy and hard to understand what's going on. What I like to do instead is I use a technique of moving an invisible object from one side of the screen to the other and the length of time that it takes to move from one side to the other is essentially how long I want to wait for that second tap. And if that second tap is detected, I'm going to cancel that movement. That movement will only trigger all of these responses. We're going to use the range trigger for this, by the way. You're going to see in a second. It'll only trigger these responses if it reaches that right edge. So if I stop it and I reset it before it hits that right edge, then all of these responses won't fire. So let's set up what I'm going to call my timer object. I'm going to create a shape doesn't matter what shape. I like to use an oval for this. And I'm going to give it a color just so we can see it. We'll make it invisible at, uh, at some point. But here we go. Let's put you, uh, let's set the origin to the center and we'll set its X property to zero just so we can always see it. All right. When I hit the tap here, I want to start this object moving from left to right. So we're going to call a move on oval six and let's rename this we're going to call this timer object we are going to move timer object to x375 and instead of calling all of these 
items uh, immediately. What I want to do is instead I am going to use a range trigger to detect when this item has reached the right edge of the screen. So let's add a range trigger. I'm just going to collapse this for a second. Range on timer objects, X property. And the way that range works is you set a threshold for a property that you're looking for. And when that property hits that threshold, the responses will fire. In this case, I want the, the responses to fire when the X position is 375 pixels or greater. That's this first icon right here. And now let's take all of our animation here and move that into the range trigger. So now I've separated the tap from the animation. And then I can stop this animation by stopping the animation of this move, a single stop. So let's preview this, just make sure that our movement is working. So one tap, you're gonna see the ball moved all the way to the right. And I'd like it to happen again. So we also need to reset the, uh, the ball here. So in our range trigger, I'm also going to call a reset of timer object. And I don't want this reset to be animated. I want it to happen immediately. So I'm going to turn the duration off, set it to zero. And this should now reset the ball when it hits the right edge. There we go. And I can do this single tap over and over again. Now, in order for it to detect the double tap and not the single tap, I need to cancel the movement of this ball before it reaches the right edge. So in our double tap here, I'm going to add a reset response on the timer object. And I want that reset to happen immediately, not animated. So I'm going to set its duration to zero. And now when I preview this, single tap lights up the left light bulb double tap lights up the right light bulb. And that happened a little bit quickly. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna slow down the delay here. So my move, instead of happening over 2 point, 0 0.2 seconds, I'm gonna change it to 0 0.5 seconds. And now let's preview this again. Now single tap, you're gonna see it takes longer to get to the right side there. And if I double tap, you're gonna see it move just a little bit and then it reset it. Single tap, double tap. Great, so let's change this back to 0.2 seconds. And the last thing I want to do is I don't want this object to be visible, so I'm going to make it invisible. And you can do that by just turning off its fill. Let's preview this. Single tap, left light bulb, double tap, right light bulb. There we go. All right, great. Now, you advanced guys out there, I can hear you screaming at me like, well, I've already thought ahead and I use send and receive to separate my, my logic out here. And what I mean by that is I created a receive trigger to do my animation. So when I tap, I send a message called light up bulb one, and then I have this receive that receives light up bulb one and does all of this. And when I double tap, I am sending light up bulb two, and that calls uh, this message light up bulb two, and this receive is set to receive that message, and it would execute all of these things. Now this is a great technique to separate your logic out because these things are uh, pretty involved in what they do. And right now we only have it happening on a single event when we tap this, but there could be another reason why we all also want to light up this uh, second light bulb and run that animation. So by separating this out, all I have to do is use a single send, and I can do that from a bunch of different places, and that makes this set of logic reusable. So you may think that if I've set it up this way with the send and receive, all I have to do is call a stop on the send when I do my double tap, right? Well, here's the kicker. You can't do a stop on a send because a send is not an object on your timeline. You can, o or on your stage, I mean, you can only call a stop on either a variable or an object on your timeline. So in order for this to work, I'm gonna use the exact technique as I showed you in scene two, where I'm gonna use my timer object. And you can see I have my timer object already here. It's set up to go, and we are just going to set this up. And I also have my range trigger here, by the way. This is set up to go to. So let's add our move. And I want to move the timer object, move it to X375 over 0 0.2 seconds. And instead of having my send here, I want to have it in my range trigger, which is already set up by the way. So I'm going to turn this one off. So now it doesn't fire under the tap. And in my double tap, we are just going to call a reset 
on our timer object and set it the duration to zero seconds. And this will do exactly what we did in the previous example. Preview this, single tap, lights up the first light bulb, double tap, lights up the second one. There you go, easy as pie. This is how you handle single tap and double tap on the same element. If you've run into a snag with one of your pies and you'd like to ask us for help, please check out the link in the description below. As always, thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next video.